Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1969 Seattle Pilots What If Scenario. Today's matchup is between the Chicago White Sox and the Seattle Pilots at Six Stadium. On the mound for the Sox today is Gary Peters, whose record is 17 and 8 with a 3.74 ERA. And pitching for the Pilots today is John Geldar, whose record is 7 and 1 with a 3.09 ERA. Okay, so we are on a <laughs> three-game losing streak and uh, sinking quickly, uh, especially when you look at the standings here. You'll see that uh, we're seven and a half back with a month and a half to go in the season. Um, the only glimmer of hope that we have is we're getting our ace pitcher back in seven days, and Rich Rollins is going to a rehab assignment uh, after today's game. So he'll be back in 10 days. So we do get two of our most integral players uh, back in the next uh, 7 to 10 days. And maybe that'll give us a shot because Oakland and Minnesota are both suffering from injuries uh, as of late. And that might give us an opportunity to sneak in there and make it interesting in the last month and a half. Um, but that's our only real hope. We have, I noticed earlier today, uh, as I was looking over, we only have 83 total home runs this year. In the last 20 games, who do you think has hit the most home runs uh, of the players on our team? I'll, I'll, I'll pull up our team. I'll give you a cheat sheet here as you're looking here at our lineup versus lefties. Um, who do you think, of all of our players, here's the home run column, who do you think has hit the most home runs in the last 20 days? You're not going to guess. It's Jerry McNurtney. He has nine total home runs. He's hit five home runs in the last 20 games. Uh, and then the next are players with two, which is Lou Pinella, Van Kelly, and Joe Pepitone. Those are the three players who have had two home runs. Um, uh, those are the four total players who have had two home runs or more in the last 20 days. So... For a minute there, our offense was humming along, and now it's not. Our pitchers were doing well, and now our pitchers are struggling, both our starters and our bullpen. Um, so I don't know what we have to hold on to um, other than a little bit of hope that uh, Brabender, as he comes back, will give us a little bit of a boost. Um, but as I've, I've stated in the last, I don't know, seven days of playing uh, these games, I really feel like our pitchers, our starting pitchers, have kind of hit their threshold in innings pitched and now aren't really able to give us even five good innings. Um, and I hope we can get a little bit more today from Gelnar, who has only thrown 55 and a third major league innings. And that's why his record is 7-1. and one. I think he's still capable uh, at this point of the season to be someone who can give us a victory. Uh, maybe we'll get that today. If you take a look at our bullpen, you'll see that Diego Segui and Dick Bates, uh, neither one are available. Uh, everyone else is good to go. And uh, our lineup versus Gary Peters. He's got 17 wins. He is a left-hander. Uh, we have to mix it up a little bit today. Unfortunately, we got to put Van Kelly at third, which is his normal position, but he's a left-hander. And that's because um, Kessinger and Patek both are listed as tired. You may have seen that uh, when we were looking at the lineup earlier. So uh, Kelly will get a shot to play uh, third base today versus a left-hander, and that is not good for us. Okay, let's uh, take a look at the lineup rundown for the Chicago White Sox. There we go. Batting leadoff and playing center field is Angel Bravo. Batting second at third base is Pete Ward. Batting third in left field is Carlos May. Batting cleanup at shortstop is Woody Held. Batting fifth at first base is Bob Spence. Batting sixth in right field is Walt Williams. Batting seventh at second base is George Orda. Batting eighth and catching is Dwayne Josephson. And batting ninth is the pitcher. <clears throat> Gary Peters, excuse me. 
Let's take a look here at John Gelnar. Gelnar is making his 10th start. He's 7-1 with a 3.09 ERA. 40 strikeouts and 55 and a third innings pitched. Opponents are batting 246 against him. He's got a solid fastball. A decent ground ball percentage is 44%. Uh, his fastball is really a two-pitch pitcher with only one good pitch. That's the fastball. Overall rated a 76, the 26-year-old righty. Is arbitration eligible in 1971? If you take a good long look at his log, you'll see that he's been pretty damn good for us. He's got five decisions in a row where he's got the victory. Um, he's only had one bad performance, and that was giving up uh, five earned runs on April 1st versus Boston. Um, I guess going back, he gave up five runs, three, uh, two earned runs against California. Still got the win in that ball game. And, uh, I mean, he doesn't walk a ton. He strikes out a decent amount. So he's been really good for us. And I think, more importantly, he hasn't hit that pitcher thr threshold that a baseball mogul seems to have. Here's our defense for today. Um, rough on the right side and behind the plate. We've got Angel Bravo, a rookie, leading off versus John Gelnar. And he hits a comebacker to Gelnar for out number one. Next man up is Pete Ward. Third baseman for the Sox. Flipping it into left center field. That falls in. For Little duck snort to left center field. And Ward is on base. He's betting 300 now after that base hit. Carlos May. Number three hitter, batting 242 with seven home runs. Goes to left field for a base hit. Ward goes to third, and Gelnar is in trouble. I guess what we'll do is we'll pull third base in, which is Van Kelly, and keep everybody else back, so maybe we can get a double play. Uh, Woody Held does not have speed, neither does May's got below average speed. And we could give up that um, run for a potential double play. Third baseman in to uh, prevent that run from scoring if it goes to him. In theory. And a pass ball. I mean, why have a strategy? <laughs> there's, no st there's no reason to have strategy. It doesn't matter. And now May's in scoring position. So, and there's a base hit. So it's 2-0. And uh, there was nothing I could do to stop it other than May not going home. So Gelnar has given up three hits. That um, run is unearned. And I think like that is a big part of the freaking programming in this game is that, you know, your opponent's got to score runs somehow. And we don't want to hurt the team ERA or the uh, individual ERA. And so they give up all these errors and, um, you know, opportunities uh, to give up runs but not earned. And uh, I mean, there's an example of it. I mean, it's just, it's so stupid. I, there's nothing you can do to prevent it. Base at the left. Now it's 2 nothing. Four hits in a row. And after giving uh, John Gelnar all those accolades, um, he's completely fallen apart here in the first... Um, it's five consecutive hits, pulling the infield in, try to prevent the damage. Here's George Orta, number seven hitter. He strikes out with the bases loaded for out number two. And Dwayne Josephson will step up. One pitch could get us out of this inning here. 2-0 count. And a line shot to right field. A.G. making the catch. White Sox get two runs on five hits. And we go to the bottom of the first inning. Let's take a look at our lineup rundown. Batting leadoff, playing second base is Gary Sutherland. Batting second at shortstop is Freddie Patek. Batting third in left field is Lou Pinella. Batting cleanup, playing first base is Darren Johnson. Batting fifth in right field is Tommy Agee.
Batting sixth in center field is Don Bosch. Batting seventh in catching is Jerry McNertney. Batting eighth at third base is Van Kelly. And batting ninth is Gelnar. Okay, Gary Peters. Here's a guy that is performing really well despite having a low rating. Again, ratings mean nothing in this game. We know that now. Uh, game started. He's making his 27th. 17 and 8 with a 374 ERA, 142 strikeouts in 190 innings pitched. Opponents are betting 261 against him. Five complete games, including a shutout this year. Doesn't have a fastball uh, traditionally. He's got a sinking fastball. That is his highest rated pitch. Three other junk balls. Overall, as I mentioned, a 77, 32 years old lefty. He's going to uh, free agency in 1973. Here, let's take a peek at his log. Um, well, he's made six starts since the All-Star game, and he's gone three and three. So he's um, only 500 since the All-Star game. And he's faced us the last time back in May, and he got a couple of games uh, victory, uh, giving up two runs on nine hits. And no walks. That's pretty good. All right. Here's the defense for the White Sox. Good everywhere, but held at shortstop. And Gary Sutherland leading off against Gary Peters. Gary versus Gary. Base hit to center field. And Sutherland is on. Throws him three straight sinking fastballs. Basically the same part of the plate. And Sutherland average up to 324. He's been so good. Um, all right, um, we are going to put on the hit and run with Freddie Patek, something we have not done. I kind of wish we had a better bat in the number two spot than Freddie Patek, but he was hot there for a while. Ground ball to first, that will get Sutherland over. One out, here's Lou Pinella. Finally getting back on track. Ground ball to first. And an error on the first baseman, Spence. Um, I guess it's a throwing error. So was the pitcher covering? I guess. I mean, why would the pitcher be covering? I don't know. But uh, nonetheless, uh, a run scores. Unearned, of course. Because you got to have those unearned runs. And it's 2-1. to one. And we have a chance here to tie it up with Darren Johnson. And he does. That's off the wall in right field. Darren Johnson makes it 2-2. Two to two. That is his sixth double on the year. And that is his third double in the last six games, including today. So, doing something he doesn't normally do. We like it. Two to two. So, the game taketh away, and it also gives us. Ground ball to first. Johnson will advance. Runner on third for Don Bosch. Bosch. Batting 255, seven home runs. And he walks. Okay, um... We got McNurtney up. We love McNurtney. I think, is he sitting on 49 or 50? He's got 49 RBI. Not bad for a backup catcher. Let's see if he can drive in a run. Get down! No, it's going to carry deep enough for Williams to make the catch. So we come back and tie it up in the first. We're knotted at two. Top of the second. Gary Peters leading off. Both teams almost batted around in the first inning. Here's Peters. Good hitting pitcher. Grounding out to second. One out. We're back to the top of the lineup with Angel Bravo. Out in center field today. There's a ground ball to third. The problem with our expansion team is when September comes... We really don't have that many AAA players 
that we can utilize as um, you know uh, uh, September call-ups to get some PT. We've already seen a majority of those pitchers, and we know they suck. So um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't feel like we're going to uh, be able to get any new information on those players. A one-two-three inning for Gelnar. We go to the bottom of the second inning. Here's Van Kelly uh, batting 111 versus lefties. He did have a hit in a game uh, the last time he faced a lefty. And he's not going to get one here. He strikes out. First K for Peters. Here's our pitcher, John Gelnar. He's a 235 hitter. 0 2 count. Oh, he pulls it to third. Made good contact as Pete Ward tosses him out. Two down. Gary Peters is up. He's three for five in his career versus Peters. And he gets another hit. I mean, he is a hitting machine versus left-handers. His average is 327. Um, and we only play him versus uh, lefties for the most part. He's batting 381. Good job. Okay. Uh, two down. Freddie Potek up. We'll let him swing away this time. We set him to hit and run in the first. There's a ground ball to short and held. Tosses him out. We go to the top of the third inning. Carlos May leading off. It's May, Held, and Spence. 3-1 count. And there's the first walk of the game for Gelnar. Leadoff man is on. Here's Woody Held. Held had a hit in the first part of the five in a row. And, that, you know, the thing about this game, that, that I, I don't mind that there were five hits in a row. That part, that happens. But that pass ball that was added in the middle of it, um, that part is frustrating. That is ridiculous. I mean, there's no pass balls to get a runner from first to second. There's only pass balls that allow runs to score. And that is what makes this game horrible in my mind. I wish there were a button, as uh, Bob Spence gets a hit, where I could just toggle off wild pitches and pass balls. I just wouldn't have it. Uh, because the game doesn't do it right, you know? Okay. Um, we're in a little bit of trouble here. It's first and second, one out. Gelnar's a ground ball pitcher. We need a ground ball here. 0-1 oh, count to Williams, and he hits him. God. I mean, we're, we've already got a pass ball, wild pitch. We got an error. Five hits in a row. This is um, the third bases loaded situation in two plus innings. We pull the infield in against George Orta. We cannot afford to give up any runs at this point. 0 2 count to Orta. Ground ball to short. Can he go home with it? He does. Cannot turn two, though. Um, I believe Orta struck out with the bases loaded, um, which led to um, Josephson uh, in the first inning. Let's see if Josephson comes through here. Ground. Oh, infield single. There's your infield single. Get the uh, baseball mogul bingo out. What a bunch of shit. My God, this game sucks on so many levels. We go to the bottom of the third. We're down a run. I mean, a run's got to, you know, like, why couldn't he just have a base hit to left field? You know? Um, I, I don't mind that the game is trying to generate, you know, a score. But that not that way. It's just insulting. Um, all right. So here's Lou Pinella. Now, let me just say one thing real quick here. We've had seven new subscribers in the last four days. So if you're new to the channel, we had, four, we had four new subscribers yesterday, and we had one today already. Um, so welcome to all the new people. And if you're here for baseball card content and you're just checking this out, um, welcome. And, and thank you for taking the time to watch. Um, you know, like, <laughs> I've played thousands of games of Baseball Mogul, and I bitch and complain about it. 
as I continue to follow it up with another game. Um, so this is just my personality of being frustrated with this game. Ultimately, I love this game. I've been playing it for, you know, the better part of 20 years, some version of it. And it's just, it's frustrating that it's deteriorated to the version that we're in now. Uh, the new version comes out on March 28th. I will buy it um, for our 1984 Tigers series uh, that will begin on April 1st. But, I mean, this game does suck in the current incarnation. Uh, it's almost unplayable. Now, if you're someone who just likes to generate stats, you can do, you know, play an entire season. Um, and you can set each individual player uh, to whatever, um, you know, uh, ratings that you want. And uh, they'll perform based on that. There's an infield single there, I think. As AG beats... Oh, it's a ground out! How is that a ground out? Oh, man. Ay, ay, ay. We go to the top of the fourth. <sighs> Angel Bravo leading off. Now, I mean, anyone in the right mind would take out John Gelnar here. I mean, he's given up seven hits, a walk. He's hit a batter. He's had a... Pa oh, well, he had a pass ball um, that he contributed uh, to. But, I mean... Obviously, he's terrible today. Uh, he's only given up two earned runs. So maybe he won't give up any more runs. You know, like he's given up three runs, two earned. His ERA is 3.09. So if you extrapolate that over six innings, I mean, he's going to be right there in that general area for ERA. So he might not, the game might not force him to give up any more runs as he does give up another hit. That's eight hits now for the Sox. They are taking us out behind the woodshed. And they're absolutely crushing our season. As Pete Ward with a 73 speed rating tries to steal second. And he's thrown out by McNurtney, who is, I believe, the second in the American League in caught stealing. Uh, batters that were ca uh, runners that were caught stealing. And then Carlos May strikes out. That is the third strikeout for Gelnar today. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Don Bosch leading off. Bosch, ground ball to second. Yeah, we have been completely shut down since the first. A strikeout, second K for Peters. And Van Kelly will walk. Oh, okay. So this is something the game does all the time. The only reason Kelly walked was the game is surmised that the pitcher spots up next and wants me to pull him from the ball game, right? Because, if, you know, why would you let someone swing away with a runner on first? But we don't fall for that. We'll just take our lumps. That is something that happens all too often in this game. I mean, there's no way that Gary Peters would have given up a hit to uh, Van Kelly, who's batting 100 versus left-handers. but I don't know. I guess the programming for the this type of gameplay is just not specific enough. It's so generic. And like I said, the ratings simply do not matter. Maybe they have more um, effect in a season replay mode. I don't know. But they're total garbage right now. As Bob Spence gets the ninth hit off of Gelnar, he is only at 76 pitches. I'd like to see him get through five. We are short two bullpen arms as he strikes out Walt Williams. That's his fourth K today. Here is George Orta. He's over two. Struck out once. And there's his hit. Will Spence score from first? He does. So a slow running first baseman scores from first on a double to left field. That is Orta's 15th double. Again, the ratings mean absolutely nothing here. And it makes it five to two. Can he get Gelnar at least? 
Well, that'll do it for Gelnar. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. We're down 5-2. to two. Here is Gary Sutherland. An infield single, perhaps? Yeah. I mean, so Sutherland is 3-for-3 three three today. He's got three of the four hits. I fucking hate this game. Let's do a sack bunt. Try to chip away. Patek lays down a good bunt to third. And Sutherland will advance. Let's see if Pinella can drive him home. He, he's batting 358 versus lefties. And yet, when he faces Peters, he's 1 for 14. Makes no sense. There's a base hit. 5 to 3. Good job. And, okay, so Pinella had an opportunity there for a double. Remember, he Pinella has a gap power of 73. When we first brought him on, I mean, when's the last time he had a extra base hit? So, okay, he had a home run two games ago, and then he's had four doubles and a triple in the prior ten games. So, yeah, there's no consistency to the gameplay as Darren Johnson flies out to right. We need someone to hit a home run here, like Tommy Agee. And he strikes out instead. Oh, no, he did go deep. Oh, my God. A one-two count, and he hits a two-run shot to tie the ball game. That is his 18th home run and his first extra base hit in what feels like forever. Yeah, that's only his second home run in the last 20 games. Ay, ay, ay. Well, whenever they score, we score, it looks like. As Don Bosch grounds out to first. Well, that'll get John Gelnar off the hook. We'll take out Gelnar here. We'll bring in Ron Locke to face these lefties coming up. We'll take a look at Locke. I don't think we've done that much lately. Uh, 47th game. He's 3-1 and one with a 282 ERA. He's walking more than I like. Struck out 37. Opponents are betting 196. Two saves, two blueies. Fastball rated an 84. Overall an 80. The 27-year-old lefty is arbitration eligible next year. His splits are excellent versus left-handers. Let's see how he does here. 2-2 two -two count to Johnny Bravo. Strikes him out. One out. Next man up is Pete Ward. Hard hit, ground ball to Darren Johnson. Out number two. And Carlos May, he's going to walk him, of course, to get to the righty. So simple and obvious what the game does. A comebacker. And Locke tosses out, held it first. So... Okay, we needed a shutdown inning. Let's see if we can't get the lead here, starting with Jerry McNerton. Almost got through the infield as the second baseman, Orta, makes the play. Van Kelly, he's walked today. Line drive to center field for out number two. And we will take out Ron Locke. And we're, we'll bring in Jerry May. Um, probably not a good idea to pinch hit a catcher out of the <laughs> first one out of the dugout. Um, but he hits lefties really well. He's batting 464. So who knows? Maybe he'll run into one. He's got a home run this year for us. Two overall. Ground ball to short. And Held throws him out. Okay, um, we'll bring in John Morris here, another lefty, We've got two lefties due up, and um, I have a feeling we'll see the pitcher's spot, there's John Morris, and Bob Spence leading off, 0-1 count to Spence, base at the center, yeah, I, I, you know, like, for some reason with John Morris, Lefties are betting over 300 against him. 
Why is that? That makes no sense. And Walt Williams crushes lefties. So this might just get out of hand here. Ground ball to third. Can we get around the horn? No. We do get the force at second for out number one. Here is George Orta. I don't think he's going to bunt. He strikes him out on a screwball in the dirt. Two down. Dwayne Josephson up. And he does better versus righties. Let's see what happens. First pitch swinging. Oh. Walt Williams stealing second base. Tied in the seventh. That makes no sense at all. And McNerty throws him out. So McNerty two for two today. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Game is still tied at five. I tend to think when that happens, it's like our advantage, right? Like the, mo the in-game momentum shift. And Sutherland is three for three today. Five for seven in his career. Versus Gary Peters. Can he go four for four? No. He rolls it over to held it short. One out. Let's look. take a look at the in-game stats here. There we go. Yeah. Pod Tech. 0 for 2 today. He had a sacrifice. Pops it up. Right in front of the mound. And it's dropped by the catcher. Oh my gosh. Josephson. Is that his second error today? No, no. The, the uh, Bob Spence, he had the other error. That he threw it away and allowed Pinello to go to second. Wow, that is a big, big error. I kind of feel like the game is trying to give it to us here. We have Pinella up. He hits and runs really well. We got some speed at first. Oh. How anticlimactic is that? As he hits it right back to the pitcher. That's another thing. I mentioned it yesterday. That happens way too often. There's probably a half a dozen grounders back to the pitcher every game total you know and Johnson lines it to center so we're going to the eighth oh boy do we leave Morris in there I say no I don't feel like he can get the job done also I feel like they're going to pinch hit for Peters with a right-hander. So we're going to bring in Skippy, fan favorite, Skip Lockwood. Um, overall numbers are really great, but I believe he's fallen on hard times here. Yeah, he's given up three runs in the last four games. So um, I don't know how reliable he is, but we'll find out. I also feel like we need to have a defensive replacement here. At first, because we're going to assume they're going to take out Peters. So we can bring in, and Johnson just batted. So we'll bring in Mike Hegan to play first. And Sutherland's going to have to play second. But, you know, we do have uh, Kessinger on the bench, but he is uh, listed as tired. So it's his day off today. Okay, here we go. So we much improved at first base. Dwayne Josephson leading off. 2-2 two -two count. Skippy gives up a fat one. Base hit to center. And they are going to pinch it. Cam Cameron coming in. So I, I guess correctly, but it's going to make a difference. Um, he's not going to bunt it. Josephson can't be stealing here. All right. So Lockwood strikes out. That was a good call on my part. But now we've got the lefties coming up. We're going to pull in Van Kelly at third. Try to do that psych out thing I like to do against some batters. And he was stealing! Oh my god! What is wrong with the computer AI? I mean, obviously everything. Why is a catcher trying to steal a base in the eighth inning of a tie ball game? With only one out. Man, this game sucks. 
And then a base hit to right. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. Now we have a little bit of a problem here because Pete Ward um, does hit le uh, righties really well. We're going to guard the lines. Does it mean anything? I don't even know. Maybe not. And another stolen base. This time Bravo's got the real speed, though. That is his fourth stolen base. Four for five on the year. Well, this is where we give it up then, huh? Um, what is uh, May versus righties? It's a 265 hitter. I don't know. I mean, it's going to happen anyway, so we just got to play it out. Yeah, he's going to walk him. Uh, the, I mean, the game is making the right call there. Like, I don't know if that's just part of the programming or not, but I, under, I understand why the game would do that. I mean, that kind of makes sense. All right. Um, here, so here's Carlos May. He is the better option. We could walk the bases loaded to get to Held, who's a right-hander. Um, Spence is four for four. Jesus. All right. Nothing we can do. We don't need to guard the lines. We can't pull the outfield in anymore. 0-1 count. Deep fly ball to center. Come on, Bosch. Bottom of the eighth inning. They're bringing in Don Eddy. Another left-hander. 24th appearance. 1-4. 394 ERA. 15 walks, 19 strikeouts in 29 and two-thirds innings. Opponent to play 239. Uh, he's got a fastball that's at 91 miles an hour, and it's rated at 94. Overall at 84. 22-year-old left-hander. Arbitration eligible, 1971. Okay, well, our lineup is in there versus lefties, so that should be advantage us. Tommy Ag walks. That's good news. That's good news. Um, do we have anybody on the bench that can hit and run? I guess we have Pepitone. Robinson. Oh, Robinson's actually better. Okay. Um, I just have more faith in Pepitone. Uh, so we're going to pinch hit Pepitone. Situational hitting. Runner on first. Pepitone, we're going to hit and run. Will it make a difference? Well, it'll get him over. This, uh, we can just, at least we have the runner in scoring position for McNerdy. Maybe he'll come through here. McNerdy 0 for 3 today with a strikeout. Oh, he hits it to third. What a jerk. Van Kelly. Get down! Oh, Van Kelly gets a hit! Lefty on lefty! And the Pilots take the lead. Again, that, that is not even... That, there's no way that should happen. A 105 hitting uh, backup infielder getting a hit off a left-hander to give us the lead. I mean, what are the ratings for? They're for there's, they mean nothing. Oh, now we'll pinch hit. Bill Robinson. Two down, and Robinson strikes out looking. Yeah. Then a lefty strikes out a right-hander. Okay, we got to um, fix our defense here. So Pepitone will go to right, and we are good. We just need to bring in a pitcher. And we'll, yeah, I mean, we'll bring in our closer. It is Mike Marshall. Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. 22 saves, three blueies. His numbers are impeccable otherwise. Um, 89 mile an hour fastball. It's rated 87. Overall at 84, the 26 year old righty is arbitration eligible next year. Okay, it's held. 
Spence, who's four for four, and Williams here in the ninth inning. Can we steal a ball game? We certainly do not deserve this win. And a base hit. Sorry, so. A guy with has the lowest rating in the lineup gets a base hit. We will guard the lines. I mean, is he going to steal second? Um, I mean, that's what's happened all day today. 0 2 count to Spence. Fly ball into center field. Come on, AG. Oh, it falls in. That's what we get for uh, putting our worst center fielder out there. And now we're now we've lost this game. Um, we'll pull the infield in, but now there's nothing we can do. Line drive to first. Would have been nice if we could have doubled off Spence. Pull the infield in again. I don't want to go to extra innings. Well, we won't. That'll be the ball game right there. Tied at six. We intentionally walked Josephson to get to the pitcher. That's another blown save. Field in. Ground ball to second. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning. I bring in a right-hander. Bob Locker, he's their closer. Fly ball to right. All the strategy that we put into it, and like they literally just don't put any strategy into it. Tenth inning. Our bullpen has been terrible lately. Yeah, I mean, just everything back to the pitcher, because that happens all the time. Seventeen hits now for the Pilots. I mean, for the uh, White Sox. Stolen base. Doesn't matter, we'll just get it over with. Going to the tenth. Here's Mike Keegan, first at bat of the day. Base hit to left. Tom Yeji. One two count. Doesn't even take the bat off his shoulders. Joe Pepitone will hit and run. Oh, shit. Strike him out, throw him out. We can't let Marshall pitch another inning. We've only got one pitcher left. It's the Cupid doll. Bruce Brubaker. He's got a high endurance, so he'll go. He'll, be, he'll win or lose this ballgame for us right now. Double for Spence. Pop up on the infield. We'll walk Joseph to get to the pitcher spot. We're going to bring in a left hander, Tommy McGraw. Bottom of the 11th, new pitcher is Dan Osinski. More walks and strikeouts. McNerty leading off. Brubaker's going to have to bat. Van Kelly finally gets to face a right-hander. Does nothing with it. And they guard the lines versus the pitcher.
Leadoff man always gets on in this game. And there we go. Eight to six. Home run by Pete Ward. Another pitcher. Come back here to the pitcher. 20 hits for the White Sox. Bottom of the 12th inning. They're bringing in a <laughs> defensive replacement. All right. Oh, great. Patek gets a hit. Maybe Pinella can run into one, tie it up again. Well, it's a base hit to right. Here's Mike Keegan. Had a base hit his first time up. Fly ball to shallow center field. And Tommy Agee with one swing of the bat can win the ball game. He already has a home run today. Probably the player of the game. Uh, that might fall in for a hit. It does. Patek will score. So they're going to give this one a garbage run to tease us here. Full count to Pepitone. And he walks the bases. So it is down to Jerry McNurtney. I know you think this is drama, but this is not. This is a definite loss. The game just does this every time. Oh, shit. Oh, no! They walk the run in! Oh, my God! What? <laughs> Come on. Oh, man. I need some alcohol. I mean... What? They walk... So, uh, that... I don't even know if that's on the baseball mogul bingo card walking in a... A tying run, but that ought to be on there. Looks like the advanced version. Ah, oh, shit. Okay, here we go. Van Kelly. I mean, he can win the game right here. Oh, no! He's going to walk the run in! No! You have a 3-1 count! Why are you not taking a ball? What a moron! Oh, my God! Thirteenth inning. Walt Williams. Ground ball to second. That is so dumb. So, so stupid. Who was that again? Kelly. Kelly ought to send him back down to the minors. Two run home run. Ten to eight. Yeah, that was our chance to win it. We blew it. Brubaker, not a good pitcher. Um, all right, we're gonna bring in Don Dennis. The man with two first names. Mm, not great. Um, well, we'll pitch it for Brubaker. With Wayne Comer. Why not? Let's clear off the bench. Full count to Comer. Oh, come on. Walking Comer. There we go. That should have been a double play. Freddie Potek. Oh, come on. A base hit to right. Sutherland. How is Sutherland not standing on third base already? We are not going to test him against Walt Williams. We got to give Lou a chance here to go deep. Maybe give us a uh, three-run home run. 
No. All right, finally down to the final out. And that'll do it. So we're going to lose 10 to 8. A ridiculous game. Um, I mean, at least it was entertaining. Let's take a look at the standings. Uh, that uh, that might actually do it. Oh, no, the Oakland lost too. That would have put us eight and a half back, and we we could have wrote ourselves off then. Um, I mean, we, we pretty much are done anyway. But, uh, yeah, we're seven and a half back. Baltimore, one and a half up on Cleveland. Somehow New York sticking around. Let's take a look at the NL. St. Louis and New York battling it out in the East. Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, Chicago really are all in it, even though Philadelphia and Chicago are below 500. San Diego has officially been eliminated on August 14th. <laughs> uh, Houston, five games up on the Dodgers, who've won seven in a row. So that division's not over yet, although they have, what, are both the teams one and two in wins? Yes, they are. Oakland's got 70. That's kind of crazy. Okay, headline news, Brainiac Baseball Daily Beat. Joseph sends four hits. Um, leads to the win. All right, oh, that's it. Transactions. And nothing. Okay, let's pull up the box score and get out of here. We lose 10 to 8. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and or subscribe. Thank you again, all the new subscribers. I know I have my regulars who um, watch uh, pretty much every game. And I do appreciate that, especially those of you who have been around all uh, since the beginning. Thank you so much for that. And uh, welcome all the new guys. I'm, I'm excited to have a bunch of new eyes on this channel. We're going to have a contest here coming up pretty soon, too. I'm working on, a, um, on getting a prize. Player of the game. We're going to give it to Tommy Agee. He had the home run um, that actually got us right back into the game at 5-5. Five -five. Um, that seems like forever ago. Um, but he drove in three runs. Uh, we didn't really take a lot of chances. We could have stole the base. Yes, Mike Keegan was caught stealing on a missed hit, hit and run. I believe all of his caught stealings this year have come in that manner. Um, Bruce Brubaker takes a loss. He was our last arm. So we had to do it. He gave up two home runs. Dan Osinski gets the win. He's two and four. Don Dennis gets the save. Okay, that's going to do it. We're going to come back tomorrow with game three of the three-game series. Until then, everyone have a great day.